When I first came to town, I half expected to take as much time on each assignment as I did back in traditional high school. So I went about carefully doing each assignment to ensure that every single letter of every single sentence was flawless. I now realize that after a certain point of checking and checking and checking every single quiz and assignment over and over again, striving for perfection comes to a point of diminishing returns. And not only does the quality of work go down, but you also just end up wasting time. Now in the past, this was perfectly okay, since we could afford to make sure that each and every single piece of work was perfect. I mean, we had all the time in the world. But in college and life beyond, you no longer have bells that regulate each part of your day. You no longer have teachers who constantly remind you what homework is due and chase after you when you forget to submit. Instead, we're given a set of tasks and 24 hours a day. This pie chart shows the ideal. Although the average American sleeps for around 6.8 hours a night, we'll just assume that eight hours a night are spent sleeping with your schedule because, well, that's obviously healthier. I'll take away 1.5 hours for eating and another 2.5 hours for daily activities, such as transport. Now you're only left with half the day left. If you're in college, we'll say that an average of 3.8 hours a day are spent in class. Now you're only left with 8.2 hours left, which is around 33% of your original day. That's it. First, let's talk about tasks that don't have criteria for completion. In other words, you decide when you're satisfied. An example of this is studying for exams. You can revise and revise topics and take the maximum amount of time that you can take in order to be satisfied. Let's say, and this is a purely hypothetical scenario that may or may not apply to me, that you have your first biology exam on Wednesday, your first chemistry exam the Tuesday after that, and your first math exam the Thursday after that. How would you decide when to study each subject? Don't take it from me. A week before the first biology exam, I, start, I study just for biology until the exam day. Because you know what they say, for your first round of exams, always overstudy. So after that biology exam, I started studying for chemistry because, hey, I still had five whole days left to study. Not as much time as I had for biology, but still a lot of time. But after that chemistry exam got over, I realized that I only had one and a half full days left to study for math. And I hadn't even started studying. With so many practice problems to do and so many topics to cover, I had to put in more effort those one and a half days than I had put for any of the exams prior. Basically, my brain was in red alert mode. Don't use studying for exams as something you can only do one at a time. This would be fine if exams and assignments were spaced apart. But when deadlines start coming closer together, it can start to look like this. The deadlines can start to seem like little monsters out to get you. Kind of like one of those video games where, in order to win, you have to defeat a number of monsters in a set time. If you spend too much time focusing on one monster, then the other little monsters will attack when you run out of time and you lose. Now let's go back to the graph of my terrible method of studying. Instead of spacing out your work like how I did and going into red alert mode at the end, actually space out your work. This way, effort is constant and efficient rather than uneven and sporadic. Now let's talk about tasks in general. They could be either academic or personal. They may or may not even have a deadline. Spending too much of your time on one task by overthinking everything will eventually lead you to get behind on everything, ultimately causing you more stress. Rather, give yourself a time box for each task. I will eat in 30 minutes. I will finish this English essay in 45 minutes. Of course, when doing tasks that require absolute focus, put away distractions or else the amount of time you take per task will unnecessarily seem longer. Assuming you use absolute focus during these tasks, just go with whatever paragraph you have at the end of the 45 minutes and move on to the next task. In other words, don't aim for 100%. Aim for your best. If you aim for your best, then good grades will follow. It's not the other way around. Now, I'm for sure not saying to just 
scrap together some half done work in five minutes and call it a day. No, everything should be done in balance. If you're in a position where you just have too much to do and it's physically impossible to do your absolute best on each and every task, consider two factors of each task, time and importance. To help you visualize this, I made a graph that shows the relationship between the two variables. You may have seen similar graphs in self-help books, like Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Highly recommend that book. In this graph, tasks are split into four quadrants tasks that are more important and take more time, tasks that are more important and take less time, tasks that are less important and take less time, and tasks that are less important and take more time. You want to try to knock out the bottom right quadrant first, since not only are tasks of value, but they're also low unique groups. After that quadrant, move on to tasks that are more important and take more time, since the tasks you're doing are still worthwhile. After that, move on to tasks that are less important and take less time, since you're still being efficient. In general, you want to try to avoid tasks that are less important and take more time, because instead of wasting time in the red category, you could be doing something productive in the green categories. After all, disclaimer, don't think you're talking about school assignments here. Every subject is equally important, and you want to turn in all of your work. No, I'm talking about basically everything else. Ask yourself what your reason is for committing to a particular task. Is your reason actually valid, or is it just petty? Organizing tasks this way could really help you not only with your academic life, but with your social life as well. For example, is it really worth it to be part of a time-consuming relationship that ends up going nowhere, or at least not in the direction that you want it to go in? Yes, quality work is important, but it is equally important to recognize that absolute perfection is a fantasy, and that the most efficient way to get things done is to do your best on many tasks, rather than spend all your time on one task and end up wasting time. Thank you.